That shows about how much your character is, how much of a person you are. You're nothing if you can't do that. You're absolutely nothing. I don't care who you are. You're nothing. Words to the driver who hit and killed a local college student and drove away more than three months ago. It's a story Northern Michigan's news leader first told you about last November after a CMU student, Ryan Chachis, died in a hit and run. Friends say the freshman died a hero, pushing a girl out of the way before the car hit her. Ryan was killed just after midnight, November 1st, walking back to campus with a group of friends who had gone to a Halloween party. He died just a few weeks shy of his 18th birthday. In this special report, 9 and 10's Charlie Tinker spoke with Ryan's friends and police about this long wait for answers. Isabella County, 911. Uh, my friend just got hit by car. Where did it happen at? I don't know. He doesn't have a pulse. Okay. He doesn't have a pulse? He doesn't have a pulse. I didn't do one of those knocks. All right. I just met some party and surprised him in a car. So do you know who hit him? I'm going to die. We're getting everybody on the way. Ryan was talking, and that's when you see the car, and it's like, oh my gosh, and everything goes in slow motion. I even stopped for a break, like, like if you hit a little, little rock, you'll be like, okay, what was that? Not even that. It was just, you didn't see no brake lights. Joe Garbarino and Ryan Chachis met way back when, in first grade. Joe was there the night Ryan died. Three months after his best friend's death, the lack of progress is frustrating. I get the same feeling when I think of it. And what happens, you try to blank it out, but it keeps on playing over and over in your head. I kind of get a little furious with it. At this point, I mean, time's not on our side. After those, those first few days, the optimism of solving the case it dwindles. Detective Sergeant Gary Green has worked this case from the beginning. He leads a task force charged with tracking leads. This is our case file on the hit and run fatal accident. It sits right on my desk. It's the only case sitting on my desk. Each and every page in this overstuffed binder represents a tidbit of information relating to the tragedy. It contains 53 different tips, none of which has led to an arrest. Overturning every stone, we're, we're pulling at every thread, trying to find something that um, will lead us somewhere. But uh, it's been a kind of a frustrating investigation. Without a, a really solid lead, um, things aren't looking that promising at this point. It's pitch black and pouring rain here at the intersection of Billa Braille and Crawford when Ryan died. A good description of the car was impossible, so these lab color samples took time to produce. Green's team has since sifted through hours of surveillance footage from that night and countless accident reports involving blue cars. Still, no connection. A new $5,000 reward offered by Crime Stoppers and the tips it's generated offers some hope. Persistence is still the detective's most potent weapon. I have a, a tremendous amount of faith in the Michigan State Police's ability to, to investigate crimes, to when, when the chips are down, to pull out all the stops, you know, find a lead. I also have a lot of faith in, in people that <clears throat> somebody out there is going to do the right thing. More questions than answers for students at CMU where this simple cross is a lingering reminder. Don't lick me. <laughs> oh, <there's> a video. <laughs> He was a lovable person, and uh, yeah, he could have really made a, a huge mark on this world, that's for, that's for sure. He wanted to be successful. He wanted to give everybody that helped him out rewards at the end of it. That willingness to put others before himself took Ryan from class to the gym to the football field. We had one of the strongest bonds ever. Ryan decided he was going to play football. He was one of the hardest working kids on the field. He got his butt kicked every day at practice, pretty bad sometimes. Mm -hmm. He just wanted to be with his friends because we were like his brothers. Together, Ryan, Chris Venditti, Jeffrey Dyan, Joe, and three others called themselves the Magnificent Seven. They described the friend they met in high school as a happy, giving teenager, recovering, but still deeply troubled by the death of his brother Daryl a few months earlier. Watching that kid go through Daryl, I couldn't even stand watching him cry because when he cried, I cried. And watching that was unforgivable and terrible. Times may have changed for this group of friends, but the feeling of loss has not. And it's easy to dwell on promises never kept. It kind of makes me mad that he couldn't be my best man at my wedding now, and, that, and I can't be his. And it just drives me crazy thinking about what he could have done with his life. The group asks the driver responsible or anyone who knows about what happened to do the right thing and bring the closure they need. In Mount Pleasant, for 9 and 10 News at 6, Charlie Tinker reporting.
When police are looking for a dark metallic blue car. It likely has damage to the front passenger side, fender, windshield and hood. If you have any information, call Michigan State Police.